Welcome to Intro to C Programming. Today we are going to talk about pointers. I know we've been mentioning this for a while now. Today is finally that exciting lecture. First we're going to uh, talk about passing variables. We've already talked about passing variables by value. When you pass a variable by value into a function, the value of the variable is uh, copied into the value of the variable in the parameter list. So let me show you the example that we have here on this slide. Okay, so in my main function, I have this variable num stored in the heap, and it points to some location in main memory, and I assign it the value 3. When I call the function func on line 6, I pass the va variable num into it. On line 1, you see that I have another variable num which is part of the function func. Now that variable is going to be pointing at a different location in memory, but the value of the variable num from the main function is going to get copied into that location. Uh, then on line 2, when I change the value of that variable to be a 5, it changes this one. On line 3, the function terminates, so I lose my reference into main memory. I come back to the main function and on line 7 it prints out the value of num. The value of num it's printing is the one from the main function and it prints out the value of 3. So you can see that even though I changed the value of the num variable inside of the function func, that variable was the one that was defined in that function. It was not the one that was defined in the main function. So when you pass a variable by value, uh, it does not, the change does not re be it reflected in the function from which that one was called. Now, passing a variable uh, by reference is something else that we are able to do. When we pass a variable by reference, we haven't seen this before, we put an ampersand in the parameter list of the function. What that means is that when a variable is passed into that function, this variable here is going to point at the same location in memory as the original variable. So let's look at the example that I have there again. Let me uh, re refresh my main memory diagram here. Line 5, I have my variable num from my main function pointing to a location of memory where I put the value of 3. Line 6, I'm passing in the variable num into my function func. Now, on line 1, you notice that the variable is being passed by reference. That means that this variable num, which is inside of that function, is going to be pointing at the same location of memory. Then when I change the value of func.num to be 5, it changes this variable to be a 5. When that function terminates on line 3, I lose my reference to the variable num that was inside of my function func. But you see now on line 7 when I print out the value of the num variable in the main function, it prints out a value of 5 because inside of the func function it was pointing at the same location of memory. So that is how a pass by, um, by reference works uh, on a function. Okay, now on to our topic for today, which is pointers. Uh, so pointers uh, are just variables whose values are memory addresses. So keep this in mind. This is going to be very, very critical and something that you should always remember. The value of a pointer is an address. That's, if you can remember that, it's really going to help you out uh, understanding what's going on with pointers. And when you print out values, it's going to help you to understand what exactly you're printing. So. Uh, the value that's stored in a pointer is going to be a memory address. Uh, pointers enable programs to simulate a call by reference. So you'll see, I'll show you an example where we can simulate a call by reference using pointers. It also allows us to create and manipulate dynamic data structures uh, that can grow and shrink at runtime. This is a way that we can dynamically create an array at runtime when we don't know how many elements we need to have in it. Uh, we can also dynamically allocate other memory such as uh, strings, which in C are character arrays, and also uh, different structures. Uh, we haven't talked about structures yet, but we will uh, in the future. All of the scalar variables that we've discussed so far have contained specific values like int, char, double, float, 
uh, short, long. These have all contained specific values. They have not contained memory addresses. The only type of variable that is able to contain a memory address is a pointer, and the only uh, value that a pointer can contain is an address. So how do we create a pointer? Uh, under the first bullet there, the way that we create a pointer uh, is that we just put a star in front of it. We put the asterisk in front of the name of a variable, and that makes that variable a pointer. Uh, the type that is in front of it specifies the type of uh, value that that pointer will be pointing at. So um, uh, it could be pointing at an integer, it could be pointing at a float, a double, a char, or other types of uh, structures as well. Um, <coughs> count pointer is going to be a pointer then that points to an object of type int, since I've declared it that way. Uh, create an int variable, so you've done that uh, hopefully a lot of times, so there's my int variable count. And then what I can do is I can say that count pointer gets the address of count. And the way that I do that is I say count pointer equals the ampersand of count. Uh, ampersand count will give me the address of that variable. Now, I want to point out here that we have now seen a few different uses of that ampersand variable. This ampersand right there represents the address. The ampersand we saw in one of the previous slides represented that it was a pass by reference. We've also seen the ampersand to rep represent uh, the uh, logical AND or the Boolean AND operator. Um, and uh, we've seen this also with the scanf. However, with the scanf, we're actually passing in an address. So that's the same as what you're seeing right here. Uh, so just keep in mind that those are three different uses of the ampersand uh, symbol that we have in C. Uh, so this gets us the address of the count variable, and we're taking that address and storing it into the count pointer variable because a pointer is nothing more than an address. So we're taking the address of count and storing it into that variable count pointer. Uh, anywhere down through our code now, after we've done that, we can dereference count pointer, which means we can put the star in front of count pointer, and that is going to actually get us the value of the count variable. That's going to get us the value of the variable whose address is stored inside of the pointer. So uh, I know that might take a little bit to think about there. But when we dereference a pointer, which is putting the star in front of the name of a pointer, it is going to get us the value of the variable whose address is stored in that pointer. Okay, so let's see uh, how we understand this so far. Here is an example. Let me go ahead and draw this up here on the board for you while you take a look at that. Okay, line one, I create a variable called count pointer. Note also that a lot of times I name my pointers with an underscore PTR at the end of it. That's just a convention so that you know what variables are pointers. You don't have to name all of your pointers with the underscore PTR at the end. Makes it a little easier to understand though. Okay, line two, I create my variable count. It points to some location of memory where I get the value of 10. I'm gonna provide some uh, addresses here along my main memory. And let me make my window a little bigger here for you. Move it over here. Okay. So we have count pointing to location 8008 has the value of 10 inside of it. Line 3 count pointer gets the address of count. So count pointer is going to be pointing at some location of memory and what is going to be stored inside of that is going to be the address of the variable count. In this case is going to be 8008 because that is where count is pointing. Okay, line four, I print out an integer which is count. What gets printed? That's right, the value 10. On line five, I print out the dereference value of count pointer. When I dereference count pointer, it goes to location that's pointed out by count pointer, gets that address, goes to that address, and gets the value out of it. So line 5 is also going to print 10. Let me do that again. So when I dereference count pointer on line 5, it goes to that location, I get that address out, I go to that address, and I get the value that's stored at that address, and it's going to print out a 10. Line 6, I'm printing an integer, which is the value of count pointer. So I just look at what count pointer is pointing at, which is 8,008. That's what's going to be printed from line 6. Line 7, it's going to print out the address of count. So count 
is here, it's going to print out 8008 also. On line 8, I'm printing out the address of count pointer. In this case, it's going to print out 8004. Okay, uh, note that the uh, asterisk, the star, also we have multiple uses for, and you've seen a few of those already also. Uh, we use that to declare a pointer. So you see on line 1, we've used the asterisk to declare a pointer. On line 5, anywhere after that, when I use the asterisk on that variable, this is going to be dereferencing uh, the pointer. So uh, dereferencing means that I go to the location that's inside of that uh, of the pointers, what the pointer is pointing at, and I get the value back out of it. Okay, let's look at an example that I have here of how we can pass pointers into functions. So you see here on line one, I have a function called change value, and it's taking a pointer as a parameter. Line two is dereferencing that pointer, adding 10 to it, putting it back into uh, that variable. Line four, I have a change value function also that just takes an integer as a parameter. What I'm doing here is something called uh, overloading this function. So uh, one function takes an, a pointer as a parameter, and one function just takes an integer as a parameter. The compiler does not get confused, because based on how you called this function, it knows which one to call. If you pass an address into it, it's going to call the one that takes a pointer, because the value of a pointer is an address. If you just pass an integer into it, it's going to call line 4, which is the one that just takes an integer as a parameter. Okay. Let me draw this out here uh, in main memory also so that we can see what's going to happen in this code. I'll leave my addresses here for us. Note that these addresses that I'm drawing up here are just examples in your uh, operating system based on how much memory you have. Chances are your addresses will consist of uh, eight. Uh, numbers instead of just four numbers and you can see this you can run this program in your computer and you can print out what the uh, values of the addresses are okay let's see line eight I have a variable in my main function called value it's going to point at some location in memory and I have the number five stored in that location line nine uh, inside of my main function I have a variable called value pointer and line 10 it gets the address of value so it points to a location and it gets the address of value in this case would be 8000 on line 11 I print out an integer which is value this is going to print out 5 so I'm just going to make a little note down here what gets printed well first the number 5 gets printed on line 12, I call the change value function and I pass in value. This is just passing an integer into it. Uh, it's not passing an address, so it's going to call the function which is on line 4. It calls the change value function on line 4 since I'm just passing an integer into it. This is from line 12. There I get a variable called val. So this is inside of my change value function. I get a variable called val. Uh, it's not being passed by reference, so it just points at some location of memory. And the value that it starts off with is what I passed in, which is 5. On line 5, it changes that value to be a 10. When I exit from that function, I lose my reference to that location of memory from that variable. On line 13, I print out the value of the value variable in my main function, which is still a 5. So, print 5. On line 14, I call change value and I pass in value pointer. Okay, so now this is going to pass in a pointer. The value of a pointer is an address, so it has to go into a pointer. So this is going to call the change value function, which is on line 1. So in that change value function on line 1, I have a variable called my pointer it is going to point at some location of memory. Now notice this is why I say that it simulates a pass by reference because all pointers are actually passed by value. Uh, you notice that if I wanted to pass a variable by reference I'd have to put the ampersand in front of it. There's no ampersand in front of this variable. Instead there is a star in front of that variable. That means that it's pointer. It doesn't mean that it was passed by reference. So it's pointing at its own location of memory. The value that it gets is the value of the variable that was passed into it, which is value pointer. So it gets an 8,000 put into that location of memory. 
Then on line two, it dereferences my pointer, adds 10 to it, and puts it back into my pointer. Now remember that line two, another way that I could have written that is my pointer equals star my pointer plus 10. That's exactly the same thing. It's just using that plus equal operator instead. So I'm dereferencing my pointer, adding 10 to it, and putting it back into the dereference value of my pointer. When I dereference my pointer, it goes to location 8,000 and grabs the value out of it. So it's going to grab the 5 out of it here. It's going to add that to a 10, and it's going to put that new value of 15 back into the dereference value of my pointer. Well, the dereference value of my pointer is at location 8,000, so it's going to change this to a 15. Then I'm going to return from my change value function on line three. I lose my reference here to my variable. But now when I'm back in my main function on line 15 and it says what print out the value of this value variable, well you see that the value of that variable is now a 15. So it made it appear as if this was passed by reference when in fact a pointer was being passed by value but when I dereferenced it I was able to uh, simulate a pass by reference. Okay, uh, line 16, I'm calling change value, I'm passing it ampersand value. This is not passing it by reference, instead this is getting the address of the value variable and passing it in. If I wanted to pass the variable by reference, I would have had the ampersand in front of the variable in the parameter list of the function, not where I called the function. This is just passing the address of that variable into the function. So. Uh, what's going to happen here is my pointer points at some location of memory. It gets the address of value, which is 8,000, and I do the same thing again. So I'm going to dereference 8,000. It goes to that location, grabs the value out of it, which is now 15. I add 10 to it, which makes it 25, and I put that back into the dereference value of my pointer. Then when I terminate from the function on line 3, it's going to lose that reference here, and it's going to print out on line 17. Uh, the value of that variable value, which in this case will now be uh, 25. This is a very important slide. Hopefully you followed what I just went through. If not, go back through that section of the lecture again. Make sure you understand what's going on in this slide. I'm going to move up now to our last slide for this lecture. And there's only one change on this slide uh, from the previous slide. The only change is what I have here on line 4 that now I'm passing in ampersand value here which means when I pass value into this function it's actually going to be passing it by reference instead of passing it by value. Everything else is going to work exactly the same so I'll let you figure out exactly what's going to happen. I'll just walk through the first couple of lines here so that you can see uh, what's going to be different on that function call. Okay, so I have my value variable in my main function pointing at a location where I get the value of 5 on line 8. Line 9, I got my value pointer variable. Line 10, I set it equal to uh, the address of value. So you see here is my 8,000 that I put in there. Line 11, I print out uh, 5. That's the same so far. Line 12, I call the change value function on value. Now it's going to call the one which is on line 4 because again, I'm just passing an integer. I'm not passing an address. I'm just passing an integer. So it calls the one that's on line 4 from line 12. Then, when I call that though, this val variable that's declared in the change value, since it's being passed by value, it's going to point at the same location of memory as that value variable did on line uh, that I had passed into it on line 12. Now when I change val to be 10 on line 5, it changes it inside there. When I return from that function, I lose my reference to the val variable and uh, on line 13 I print out the value of the value variable in this case it's going to print out a 10. I can walk through the rest of this but the rest of it works exactly the same way because now I'm passing value pointer on line 14 and I'm passing the address of value on line 16 both of those are going to call the function which is on line 1 and my next two printouts are going to be 20 and 30. Uh, so trace through that, make sure that you can get those answers, you understand how it works. We're going to write a program dealing with pointers uh, today, so make sure that you watch that also. If you have any questions, let me know. Good luck.